In this video, I'm going to talk to you about LARP. In the LARP principle, it's the focus is on keeping risks as low as reasonably practicable. And the approach to risk incorporates a trade-off between the cost of risk reduction and the benefits obtained, a cost-benefit analysis type approach. So reasonably practicable, we know that reasonably as a word has had lots of challenges, debates and discussions in legal circles. And it could be considered as implying basically the degree of acceptable risk in an activity or environment balanced against the time, trouble, cost and physical difficulty of taking measures to avoid the risk. Fundamentally, the greater the risk, the more likely it is that it is reasonable to go to substantial expense, trouble and invention to reduce it. But if the consequences and the extent of a risk are small, insistence on a greater expense wouldn't be considered reasonable. You can see just in those short few words and slides how the word reasonable can create a whole host of thoughts and debates, especially in legal jargon. You'll recall that in the risk equation, it's a product of consequences and likelihood. So there's always going to be discussions and debates where one would say, well, you didn't reduce the likelihood to a reasonable level, or it's not reasonable to assume that the consequences are going to be. You may have come across this triangle before, where we go from an unacceptable region through to a broadly acceptable region from a risk perspective, where it's negligible risk. And in between is the ALARP region. There have been numbers that have been assigned to this in the past, and companies do vary in terms of assigning numbers. Typical numbers you'd see between unacceptable and the LARP as a cutoff is 10 to the minus 3, and at the lower down levels it'd be 10 to the minus 6 per year. But why a LARP? Firstly, it's recognised industry practice. It's been widely accepted, and it makes best use of available funds when you look at it from a risk assessment perspective. In many companies, it's used to meet parent company expectations, and it also ensures compliance with standards and regulations, for example, in a safety case. The most significant reason is that it's there to avoid risks or to minimize exposure to risks. It's particularly relevant for major accident hazards, MAHs. In this graph, you can see, again, a similar shading of colors from green to, to red, and you could consider process safety and occupational safety relative to consequences and frequencies. This graphic shows what we want to try and avoid. You can see from 1974 to 2010, and I know there's been others since then, there's been a range of catastrophic events. We really do need to make sure that we're managing those risks as low as reasonably practicable or as low as reasonably acceptable relative to guidelines, codes and standards. But how do we do that? Well, firstly, and most importantly, we need to understand the risks presented and proposed by our activities within the organization. To understand those risks requires a systematic consideration of the hazards that are presented by the right team, looking at it from a mix of discipline perspectives. It's really based on the most accurate and comprehensive information that's available at the time. Assessing the risks, there are many techniques to assessing risks, and typical examples include HAZOPs, QRAs, bow tie analysis, failure mode effect analysis. Uh, there's a whole range of them, but it's important to pick wisely. In the continuum for risk assessment, you can see how it fits in, in terms of increasing time, information, details, complexity, and the perceived risk. You can start with simple checklists and goes all the way through to complex methods like FMEAs or QRAs, quantitative at risk assessments. When to do it? Well, your best opportune moments and your ability to influence risk reduction is right at the early stages from conceptual planning. As it goes further down the chain towards design, procurement, construction and startup, your opportunity to influence becomes less and it goes more from prevention to mitigation. So, as I say, the early bird catches the worm. If you can get it right at the front end back to conceptual planning, that's the best time. So, to conclude, risk management is a business critical activity and a function. And managing risks to an acceptable level requires strategy and clarity. If we're going to assess risks, we need a baseline that provides granularity. And a LAP is essentially a trade-off between the cost of risk reduction and the benefits that you get from that risk reduction. So, it's a cost-benefit type approach. 